Hello flower friends. In today's video, I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you about how I dry flowers. And I'm going to show you how I make a dried centerpiece. My name is Ellen Frost. I'm the owner of Local Color Flowers, and I've been a florist for over 15 years. I also write a flower newsletter, which you should definitely check out. And I host an online community called Flower More for flower nerds who want more flowers in their life. So let's get started today with this sort of um, more modern vase. I wanted to really showcase that dried flowers can look more modern. Uh, they don't have to feel as old fashioned as I think sometimes we think they are. So I'm gonna just start with a vase uh, and I'm gonna use chicken wire as my mechanic. And there's not gonna be any water in this vase, so I'm just gonna use the chicken wire to hold my stems in place. And I've made kind of a tube of chicken wire. I'm gonna stick that right inside. And I don't need anything to hold it in, it, it's nice and secure. I'm gonna start my arrangement with foliage. And this is Polyanthemos eucalyptus. It dried great, you can see, kept its color, the leaves look great. So right now I'm just filling my arrangement to cover up my mechanics and to build the shape of my arrangement with my foliage. And then the next foliage I'm going to use is Lindera. So Lindera is one of my favorite fall foliages. It is sort of a suede gold color. And once it's dry, it's great because it really holds its leaves. See that? Uh, I really love to use Lindera this time of year. So I'm going to add some of this for some really pretty fall color. Now that I have my foliage in, I wanna add a little bit of filler. And my favorite dried filler is German status. This is a perennial plant. It's short, so you see, I mean, this one's not that, that short, but these only grow about 12 to 14 inches in the field. It's really branchy, so you can break off these little pieces. You can tuck some short pieces in. The great thing about using dried instead of fresh is that you don't need to make sure you have long stems that are sticking in the water. You can tuck these little short pieces in and they can just be very short inside your base. Now that I have the base of my arrangement, I'm going to start adding some focal flowers. So there are lots of flowers that dry well as focals. My favorite are peonies. Peonies dry so well as focal flowers. Of course, we don't have a lot of peonies in the spring to spare. Uh, so we don't generally dry too, too many of these, but the ones that we do, I love to tuck in as focal flowers because they have nice big blooms. They hold their color really well. So this is a coral charm here. This one is a, a red charm and you can see how, how just rich the color is. And the shape is, you know, like a focal flower. So a lot of times I think with dried flowers, the flowers are small, they're dainty, they feel more like filler. But when you're using peonies, they really do have uh, the, the weight of a focal flower. So I've got these in a couple different colors. These even have some little side buds on them that dried really cute. Another focal flower that I have that dried well this year were dahlias. And this was a surprise to me. One of our dahlia growers had told me that she thought they dried well. She had tried some and I had not ever tried them, but they did dry really well. They kept their shape and they kept their color. I'm also gonna add some line flowers. So I always like to use line flowers if I have them. This is Plume Celosia. Plume Celosia holds its color great and it has such a pretty unique feathery shape. And I've dried these pretty long, no foliage, kept that nice feather look on them. And because these are line flowers, I wanna keep them a little bit taller so that when you look at the design, your eye travels down the line to your focal flowers. 
And just about all colors of plume celosia dry well. The only one that I have found that doesn't dry well are any of the yellows. So the Sunday gold or any of like the lime green ones. I don't think they dry as well. They end up looking kind of brown. And we really like these ones with color. So, you know, any of the oranges, reds, uh, these hot pinks, they do work really great. This is yellow yarrow. And this yellow yarrow dries great. It keeps its color. I like it as a little bit of a filler. And the variety of this yellow yarrow, this is moonshine yarrow. It is my favorite yarrow, and it's really the only one that dries. This year, for the first time, I dried some lysianthus, and I dried them in bud. So these were sort of, a, I think these were champagne when they started out, and they dried into this really beautiful golden yellow, and they kept their shape like sort of like lysianthus has, like a rose shape. So I was excited to include these in the design. One of the easiest flowers to dry and that keeps its color really well is Gompfrina. Every Gompfrina holds its color and its shape and is great for dried designs. So you can see this is pink here. One of my favorite flowers to dry and one of the easiest to dry is straw flower. You can check out the notes um, in this video and I've linked to my top 10 flowers for drying. Straw flower is high on the list. These flowers are almost dry in the field. They have a really papery feel and they hold their color and their shape. They are uh, one of, like I said, the easiest flowers to dry and they come in tons of colors. All right, next I'm gonna use some Crespedia. Crespedia is another one of my, on my top 10 list. Uh, these flowers, again, almost feel dry in the field. They're little yellow balls. Everybody loves these little flowers. They have a similar shape to the Gomfrina, but Gomfrina does not come in this yellow. So I like the combination of the Gomfrina and the Crespedia. Crespedia is also called billy balls. They're commonly called billy balls. And I like to add them in in threes. Uh, I learned a long time ago from a designer friend of mine, Carol Caggiano, that anytime you have something that's like this, a little tiny ball shape, like the Gomfrina or the Crespedia, if you put them in one at a time, like just on their own as singles, they look a little more dotted and they create kind of a polka dot look. And that's not really what we're going for. We wanna have a more cohesive look. So I try to, I try to pair them or collect them in little groups of three when I put them in my designs. Uh, lastly, I'm gonna put in a couple of non-flower elements. So things like, this is lotus pod. We have one grower who provides lotus pods for us and they come in a really bright green, but then they dry really quickly into this like dark brown. And I liked these because they complement this vase and they're, these are kind of a smaller size one. There's really big ones, but these feel a little bit like a focal flower to me. And so I wanted to include some to sort of tie the vase to the arrangement. So another pod that I'm gonna use, these are poppy pods. And poppy pods are super easy to dry. They basically um, are dry, you know, almost when you get them. And they have such a unique shape. Again, I'm gonna try to cluster these in threes so that they don't feel dotted. But they do add a lot of interest to an arrangement. All right, there you have it. A long, low dried centerpiece that would be great for a fall table, especially something that's long, rectangular, or oval, and perfect for Thanksgiving, and it'll last you all through the holidays without any care or maintenance. Dude, this centerpiece is so good. <laughs>